This is Show Versus Business, where pop culture meets pop money, with your host, the real Theo Harvey, and Mr. Benja, with all the relevant information. So, Mr. Benja, what's going on with you? What's going on with me? We got some good ones, man. Hey, you started that with a little extra fire in you. It's that Easter. It's like uh, you were dead a couple of days ago. Now you're alive again. This is great. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the streaming wars today. And after that, we got a bunch of little random stuff we're just going to jump into. Got the Aqualite trailer that we were talking about earlier. The Pooniverse. Yes, Winnie the Pooh. Niverse. TikTok ban. Open AI is trying to make movies. There's all kinds of stuff going on. There's some drama in the world with your boy 50 Cent. Yay. Diddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, the AI alarm has been sounded. People are getting curious. Good Times trailer came out and uh, people are talking about the magical Negroes. Not necessarily us, but others and the movie. So we'll see where all this leads us. But uh, that's a good little slate, man. How you doing? Man, I am wonderful, Mr. Benja, but I don't feel it. So every now and then my knees, I do feel it thin, but I don't feel old. But when I talk to some of my interns, man, it's like we're talking a different language. <laughs> it's Have you ever spoken to a 20, one night 19 to 21 year old lately mr benja uh yes actually i hang out at a local starbucks every once in a while and the time i go is the time a lot of youngsters go and some of them know me from the local art scene because I, I do art events around so i'll start up conversations and i think i could pretty much relate but carry on i want to hear what you got it's like talking to them is like talking to the internet it's like the things they say is like reading a post. Do you ever get that sense when you talk to them about that? Yes. Was your last paragraph for the last four minutes of you talking? Was that like a meme? Just explain to me, just <laughs> but with your mouth. Uh, what was that? It's, dude, it's unhinged. That's how here we go. <laughs> yeah. So one of my interns, great personality and just helping with a social media and how we can enhance it and gave me some great ideas on some things. But the way they talk is very interesting to me because it's, they'll say something. And I was like, what was that? It was, but the way they said it was almost like they were reading a comment. Stop, bro. Stop, bro. Listen to bro. Or it's just, are, are you speaking to me? Or are you just, are, are you talking from a comment? It was very interesting to hear them speak and, and, and communicate to me in that style. Where it's like, I said, well, slow down. What was that again? She said, oh, oh, no, this is just, you know, how, how I talk. I said, oh, okay. But it was just that, that everything's got an exclamation point or everything yeah. is just like a in middle thought with a lot of lingo that that's new to, if you don't know the exact term. Now, look, be honest with you, as, as a black man, I'm hip to some of the stuff, but that is it, moving so fast. <laughs> it's because she said, stop, stop begging or something like that. Some terms she used, but I said, oh, you mean thirsty? He's like, oh, yeah, you get it. You get it. <laughs> so it's just, wow, man. I, I love it. So they want me to, we're going to do a meme. And we're going to give a little shout out, a little behind the scenes here. We're going to do a little meme with me doing a notebook where I'm writing down some notes. And then her explaining some stuff to me. But then they're going to speed up my stuff, just like looking stressed out, trying to keep up with what she's saying. So let's go see how it does. We'll see how it does out there in the, in the TikToks. But uh, it's just... I'm like, this is the one of the few times I literally feel my kids, they're generation alpha. They, I still can talk to them a little bit because they like kid stuff. But man, these kids in the, the internet age, man, they are, that language is changing rapidly. <laughs> James, if you're listening, you got to throw up that Steve Buscemi meme of a hello, fellow youngsters that Theo's going to be trying out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It is. I love it though. I love it because it's you know you ever get those moments sometimes you're like, oh man, what's going on in the world? It's just going to hell in hand back. Hold up. <laughs> this is what our parents talked about when they were looking at us. Yeah. It's, but, but it's not so much I think it's almost like you feel it now. And now that's what being old is about. Being older is about, right? You just have this feeling. It's just, oh, this stuff is not good. But who's to say? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever run across the, like you were saying with the comments, the random 
comment slash statement that's not necessarily directed at anybody. It's just a, <laughs> like, I said something, and then I heard some people like, that's weird, bro. You need to da 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 And then uh, there were a couple other comments, and I was about to respond, I think, and I'm like, wait a minute. They didn't necessarily say it at me. It was just said. So it was just like this yeah. comment stream in real time, and I was like, huh. Okay, no harm, no foul. I think that's how they think now. It, it's, they just say things and just out in the ether, but it's not directed to you. It's almost direct confrontation is not something they're good at. Let's be honest. It's all around the way, around the block. Yeah. <laughs> and how you communicate now. And Dude, just, I, right. I, get, I get called out for that so much. We're going to talk about getting called out later when we get into Mr. Combs later on, but man. It's something I got to think about. I'm, we're going into the next quarter, so I'm going to be thinking about this as I try to not reconnect, but as I put myself out there in a different way. Yeah, definitely thinking about all this. You got any planning going on? I know you like Q2 and Q3 and all your Qs. Yeah, all my Qs and my, my <laughs> P's and Qs. I, I mind them all. That's yes, right. we Q Q1 is in the books. So I did some evaluation earlier today and. I give myself a probably, I don't really, I don't really grade myself, but I would say probably a middling B minus. I think I had some uh, health concerns earlier. I'm okay now, but just some health concerns earlier in the quarter. So slow down some of my other, my health ambitions and some other things I wanted to do. But overall, I was impressed with some of the things I did get out with a, with a book launch and some other things. So definitely it, it was a learning experience. It's just, wow, when you think in 90 days, what you can accomplish, you'd be surprised. You look back and say, I accomplished a lot. 90 days. I just have to put it on paper and wax and to, and use that to give me energy. Yeah. And so now Q2 is here officially Monday, April 1st, April Fool's Day, and it's just preparing for that and thinking. Now I'm trying to, get, I'm just so in the weeds, but it's, so it's like I have my weekly goals, I have my monthly goals, and then I have the quarter goals. And sometimes the quarter goals are so detailed. I said, okay, that's way too much detail. So let me go back to my weekly goals and go back to my monthly goals. Now I'm going to go back to my quarterly goal and make it a little bit more broader and bigger. Cause I think I was being stuck in the, the, Hey, you know, these are the, I, on Tuesday I can call this many people. And on Wednesday you get, you get so locked in the weeds, but when you do the quarterly goals and the yearly goals, but right now I'm focused on quarterly goals. I'm trying to think more broader and bigger. So that's my challenge for me for this year, just to go back in or this quarter really think a little bit more, more bolder for my quarter goal. And so that's what I focus on. And Oh, one last thing. I know you and I don't do it, but maybe we'll start doing it in the future. But I do have an accountability partner now that we did our, our quarter goals at the end of December. And so we both evaluated that. Then we just had a meeting on Friday. And so we just said, okay, this is what you're going to do. And so it was funny. I was talking to him. <laughs> he was like, uh, yeah, this is what my goal. I want to raise his money and this and that. And he whispered, the, I said, what's the number? It's going to be, it was like some okay number. I said, man, say it with your chest, man. Be loud and proud, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, and, and, and he, he challenged me the same way. He said, man, be specific. What you want for QT. And so I think having an accountability partner is, is, is good. So I'm going to see how this works for me for this next quarter. What about you, Mr. Benja? Yeah, man. Quarterly action is happening. I, I don't grade my quarters either, but this quarter was pretty strong in terms of just doing that a, a personal shift. I don't, I, I told you about, I think I told you about at one point, remarkable resolutions where mm -hmm. you're doing something and you don't like necessarily have, I'm going to go to the gym or I, you have those goals, but what you really want is for the world to actually be able to remark on your situation. And you, you put such a dent in the universe that people are like, Oh man, I was driving and it was a dent in the universe. I almost crashed. So yeah. This gravitational was, pull is pulling me, pulling me away. Wow. Exactly. So yeah, I was going about my business and just earlier today, I went to pick up some things and I got, it's funny. I'm not listening for it because I'm not trying to think about what other people are saying. But after I ran into, I went to pick up some stuff from this guy and he had all this stuff to say. And I was like, okay, cool, man. Thanks. Nah, I'm going about my business. Jumped back in the car, was driving, and I was thinking, wait a minute. He was remarking on my progress. And I've gotten to the point where I'm not looking for that remark, but I had to stop and note it down. I was like, yeah, I did what I said I was going to do. 
to the point where this guy had to acknowledge it. He was just like, yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm feeling good about some personal changes and really getting my, my, I was about to curse, getting my stuff in order. <laughs> I was Say with cook. chess, man. <laughs> Say with your chest. Did you get yourself a, a Hot Wheels car? Yeah, it's actually over there. The guy it's... remarked, right? And that's your yeah. reward. He remarked, you should get yourself a reward. There you go. Yes. Yeah. I listen. <laughs> I, I, do, I do have them. There's one from another occasion I have right here. This is a funny one. It's a Hot Wheels, yeah. but it's a wheelchair. Oh, good for them, man. Good for that them. guy Be in inclusive. the wheelchair. That guy in the wheelchair is doing so much stuff. And I was just, I caught myself complaining about something. And I'm like, why am I complaining? I've got this. I've got that. I can still do it. And then I saw the Hot Wheels, the wheelchair. And I'm like, I've never seen a Hot Wheels wheelchair. And this guy, I looked him up and he's done all these amazing things on a wheelchair, like a skateboarder on a wheelchair. And I was like, oh, wow. this guy's not complaining. He's out there killing it. Let me grab that one. And now it. every I time, it. now every time I start complaining, I think about this little Hot Wheels guy right here in the wheelchair and I'm like, Psh, done, keep going. Man, he's doing his thing, man. One last thing I wanted to bring up too, this is dispatches from the television movie sets, right? I'm out there watching the new stuff. Hey, go check out on Netflix, the three body problem. Have you heard about this, this TV one. show? I've been waiting on this one and people say it's actually complex TV, which is a rarity now. But, it's, uh, it is a TV still. How complex can it be? But it is hard science. So better brush up on your quantum mechanics and entanglement and superposition and what they mean. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's always good. I, I was like, oh man, I understand. I just watched Oppenheimer and I understand quantum mechanics. <laughs> but it's pretty interesting. It's a, it, I actually have the book. I don't have it with me now. I, was, I meant to read it. Never got a chance to read it. The okay. TV show came out. So I said, I guess I'll just watch the TV show. At first, it was a little slow to my taste, but it started to dawn on me what they, th they were doing because it's very radically different uh, thinking because the, the writer of the story is Chinese. And so the creator, the author of the book, created something from a, a Eastern philosophy, right? A science from Eastern philosophy, which we in the Western world hardly ever get. So it's very different style of sci-fi. There's American characters and different characters from different countries, but it's just very rooted in Eastern philosophies and, and how they think about the world. If you like to think, if you like to understand what it means to be human and all that good stuff that great sci-fi does, definitely I highly recommend checking out the three body problem and maybe we'll discuss right. it when you check it out. You know what? This topic came up. I'm going to, I'm going to add a new topic in here that I didn't mention before. Have you heard of the second screen problem? I have. <laughs> all right. As far as I know, there's a, as far as not as I know, but as far as I understand it, streaming companies like Netflix have been worried about this concept called the second screen problem, where when I first heard about it, I was thinking, oh yeah, your phone, that's a second screen. That's a problem. They're looking at it from the point of view that the phone is always the primary screen and whatever you're streaming, whatever you're watching at home, that's the second screen. And it's a problem that it's the second screen because you're trying to watch a show and you're in the, in your head thinking, I should check my phone. I'm looking at this. Oh, what's he got to say? So now they've, they, I don't want to say dumbed down, but they've been presenting streaming shows in a way that you have to say, th they say things multiple times. They make sure they're very clear. There's a lot of visuals on screen to make sure that you can't wander off and you always have to look up every couple seconds. And this is the second screen problem where it's like, they have to, they can't go as complex as they would like to with a lot of shows because somebody in the executive chair will complain and be like, Hey man, this is far too, this is far too captivating and engrossing for us to put on our service. You got a second screen problem. So what are you going to do? Make this easier. You heard I love this? it. I love it. Yeah. A couple of things we talked about briefly when we talked about, man, I don't know if you remember, was that maybe a year or two back when. Zaslav took over Max, HBO, and he talked about lean in TV versus lean back. And there's this big issue with, like you said, television can be too complex and you're going to be focused and sit down and watch it. 
you got to be all in on it, right? So I'm more of those kind of like leaning. I like to watch shows like at night and just get in my TV shows, right? And focus on it. But then the vast majority of folks, especially, and this is a study that came out, I was trying to find it right here. One clue may lie in how this younger generation values its content. They said more than 74% of adults in the U.S. use their phone while watching television, according to insider intelligence. So basically, the younger generation even more. So they're valuing content that you lean back. And this all came about because of Netflix's investment in like those standard television shows, those shows that go like suits that goes on for 100 episodes that people would just have in the background. And the other thing has risen out of this is Tubi. You heard of Tubi. Yeah, yeah. Fox taking black culture, being like, gotcha. And <laughs> getting all the views, getting all the black views. That's one ca case, but Tubi is also <laughs> what they call <laughs> a fast service. So basic is free advertising type of television. And so you can just go download Tubi. I did it this, this weekend to try it out. And they have like over 24,000 titles, Mr. Benja, of things like Scandal to old TV shows and movies that you could just sit there and just have on. And they're saying Tubi is one of the fastest growing streaming services right now because of this lean back phenomenon and the fact that people, like you said, are doing this second stream. So I'm curious, maybe we'll do a deep dive at another time, but I'm curious to say maybe the path is going to be accepting that people are going to just want to have dumbed down television just on your screen at all times. And the second stream is just inevitable. You're never going to have all engrossing people, especially for this new generation growing up. They're the ones who are probably going to dictate how we watch television. And the old way of being all engrossed into the next Game of Thrones and all that, unless it's like something that, permeates the, the culture and it's a TikTok memes and all that, but that's few and far between. So I think the vast majority of television will probably be this second stream phenomenon or second using the phone while you watch the television show at the same time. So I don't know. That's something I, when you brought that up, that's interesting. I, I meant to put that in our show notes, but I'm glad you brought that up because I saw the Tubi data and how they were talking about that's growing phenomenally because of the fact cell phone is a cell phone people are going to watch do what they do <laughs> be on tiktok yeah. while they watch this show yeah it's it's strange and i'm thinking this is a young person kind of issue but i'm i think i told you a while back that i was hanging out with a friend this was while i was in the game industry so that's 10 years ago we were talking about watching movies and this guy's like, yeah man i'm not watching i'm not watching that movie in the theaters and we're like, well, don't you want the experience? It's like, well, yeah, but if I got to watch it, I'm going to watch it however I can get it. And later on, I caught this mm -hmm. dude just watching like a Star Wars movie on his phone. It was just like casually. And I'm like, <laughs> and he'd stop it, then go do something else, then send it text or whatever. Ooh, really? I thought you were hurting inside. You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> nah, I, I wasn't hurting inside, but it did make me realize that the rise of Skywalker, um, this was much later. It didn't make me realize that the rise of Skywalker, which I tried to play on my phone just to see, that was horribly designed. If you're thinking about designing for a small screen, it looks beautiful. But I'm just in terms of looks and the way things move in that uh, movie on a big screen. But trying it on a small screen, like when all the different starships show up, it just looks like static on the screen. I'm like, what the hell? So. Interesting <laughs> changeover we've got going on here. Hey, it was funny. Uh, I don't know if you saw, there was a extended cut when Ben Affleck had that big Super Bowl commercial, right? About Dunkin' Donuts. There's an extended cut of that commercial and he's talking to all these people. One of them is Charlie D'Amelio, the big influencer. And, she, and Ben Affleck is trying to explain to her who he is. He says, oh yeah, I'm a director of this failing 20th century art form called movies do you know what that is and she's like looking at her phone the whole time huh and so just think about that these movies like you said design of these big budget like dune too everybody's that's phenomenal or christopher nolan oh what he does on film but is film gonna be around it'll be around but is it gonna be the dominant pop culture phenomena i don't know it's so much it's so much easier to make a series and try to get people hooked on the series 
And the way I see it, it feels like a series is going to give you so much more bang for your buck. Now, I haven't really thought this through, but mm -hmm. I'm just sitting down thinking, okay, you get the streaming service or you buy a season if you want to go that route, you know, get into the streaming service for a month or whatever, or yeah, I don't know anybody who's buying a digital series. I just don't hear about that happening too often. And then you've got them for at least 10 episodes, which is say 400 minutes, 40 minutes a show. And ten. and we've already shown, I was talking to one of my marketing people is what's that? I don't know if you watched the, I read the book. I told you oversubscribed by Daniel Priestley, but he talks about this 11 hours, uh, seven touches four locations. So basically that's the way you create so much content that people just get to know you as if you're a friend It's it's indistinguishable as if we're a friend that you know in your whole life. And so yeah. I'm wondering if television, like you said, having a streaming show or is better for actors now because you become more known and the more known you are, the more people like you and trust you and will, will buy the next thing you do. There used to be an old adage. I don't know if you heard this before. If you want to want to be famous, be a movie star. If you want to be rich, have a television show. If you want to get mm -hmm. good, do theater. I don't think that's true anymore. I think if you want to be known and famous, you probably want to have more content out there. And think about all these new stars that they're putting out there now, Mr. Benja, like mm -hmm. Zendaya, Austin Butler. Where did they come from? They came from kids' television. They yeah. were TV stars on Disney first before they went become these great movie stars. So I think that may be the pathway. Ariana Grande, right? We can name about yeah. 20 of them. So I think television is a way to be famous now or a streaming show. And then also the likelihood of that television show, sometimes movies, we've seen that, but really you have more memeable moments if you have a hit TV show because it's so much more content. Yeah, I'm trying to think, what's the last hit movie? And I immediately had to throw out the MCU and DCU because those are basically mm -hmm. series in movie form. So you, you still have the same kind of, I'm continually coming back to watch these characters. So I'm trying to think of a movie where someone said, you know what? Wow. I didn't know who that person was. This movie came out and suddenly they're in my mind. And I'm like, recently, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe Austin Butler, but he came from television. He did that Elvis thing and everybody was like, oh, this oh, is yeah, a, yeah. This, this, this new guy. I never thought of him before like this, but yeah. And even the movies, they're trying to. The reason why they're becoming famous is because they're trying to create events and then people, the, the, the young folks create memes out of them and, and get them to spread on social media. But that's the only reason why people are talking about them. And let's be honest, what Barbie and or Oppenheimer would not be as exciting or made as much money if they didn't combine them both into this movie, this phenomenon called Barbie hammer. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's, it, those are the things, and then they, you know, they try to do with other movies. It's just, I think they try to do one with the Paw Patrol and Saul. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> Saw <Saul> Patrol. <laughs> why, internet? Why? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> they try so hard, man. They try so hard to make it a thing. Yeah, man. It's going to be interesting to see where pop culture goes in the next 10 years. I'm fascinated by it. But as long as they make good television shows and lean in shows, I, I'm there for it. But just lean out. Ooh, I'm not a big fan. You know what? I think if I think they could do some pretty slick moves and integrate the two somehow where it's I, I like what Amazon does with the IMDb X-ray data coming in. The Love show. it. Yes, I have, yeah, me too. I've used that before where I'm watching. I'm like, hey, this is cool. And then I'm not 100 percent into it. And I'm about 92% into it. So I decided to click the little x-ray button and then like, huh, all right. And then go back to the show. Keeping the I look for that every, I, matter of fact, the three body problem could use that. There's a lot of new actors yeah. in it. Hey, I know that actor. Where's he from? Or explain this concept to me. I wish Netflix put that in there because I think that would be so, I agree, Mr. Ben, that you're right. It could be like fluffy television. There's x-ray there. So you want to go a little deeper. It's almost like uh, you have a little uh, uh, Easter egg for the folks that really want to you know, dive deep. I'm trying to think of the, I'm trying to think of the show that's in my mind. I want to say it's on, uh, it's one of those reality shows or something. But as you're watching it, little 
fun facts will pop up in the corner. It's almost like I want that while I'm watching my show. So my phone is synced to my TV and it's mm-hmm. like watching Game of Thrones. It's like, do do you know Westeros used to be run by blah 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 blah? It's, oh, okay. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Oh, that's what they're talking about. There's a play there. I'm just gonna leave it there. There's there a play is. there. There is. Uh oh, dropping game. Uh oh, billion dollar business ideas. Watch out, guys. <laughs> So what's going on with the streaming wars, man? What are these services doing right now? Oh, man. What aren't they doing right now, Mr. Benja? So (laughs) we already said that Netflix is probably is the leader, won the war, right? When you got your competitors leasing or licensing their shows to you, it's pretty much a done deal. It's a we give up. But last we checked out, Netflix is about 260 million global subscribers. Disney Plus, about 150 million max previous HBO, just under 100 million subscribers. So those are the top three. And then you got the mid-tier services like Peacock, which is at 30 million, and Paramount Plus at 67.5 million. So it does seem right now, the smaller services are figuring out like how they're going to survive. And one of the big things is the Paramount and Peacock merger discussions. One of the big things, Sherry Whetstone, who owns Paramount, She's desperate to sell, right? That's basically the, where her billions were coming from, for her family billions. But the stock and value has de- depressed about like 80% in the last couple of years. So there's rumor that she's looking to sell quickly. And Peacock is owned by Comcast, which is another dying business. Comcast does cable. <laughs> and so it's like two terrible businesses. Let's just bring them together and see if we can make some magic. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens to these two two services. The challenge there is that Paramount has CBS and Peacock has NBC and FCC rules have said that you can't have two broadcast companies, two broadcasters, CBS and NBC combined together under one business because that's, that could be considered a monopoly and changing how people perceive the news and all that. But I don't think they don't care anymore. They're just trying to figure out how to get out of this mess that's called the streaming wars. And so these two companies are really looking to combine themselves and and get out of this mess. And one last thing, Apple, what's the Apple strategy? I think they said it's got about 0.32% total percentage of streaming viewership in the U S point zero (laughs) point. 32%. 32%. Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> 0.32%. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. The funniest thing, Mr. Benja, guess who's beating all of them? Uh, let's see. Oh, we got our... Wait a minute. Are we still talking about Discovery? No, don't. Are you no. far off? YouTube, man. YouTube is beating oh, them all. Oh, <laughs> Landmark. Yeah. YouTube is... Killing the game when it comes to just activity and, and people watching it by far. If you look at any metric, people are spending way more time on YouTube. So it's wow. This is where people watch shows and television and get their entertainment now. Whereas these, all this money that went into even is being even Netflix, right? At least, at least in the US. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things where it's wow. Does it matter to create engrossing television? And maybe the best thing would be just get television is just always on in the background and the beat to beat to beat YouTube. I don't know, because that's where that's the next battleground. How do you how you drive eyeballs and attention? Well, it's interesting. We were talking, you're just talking about YouTube, man. I was talking about reactions. And I think I finally figured out a formula for reactions that I want to do. But I was looking at a, a YouTuber or, or a guy on YouTube and was no, I was looking at it on Twitch. I'm sorry. I found him on Twitch, was looking through it. I was like, okay, this guy's pretty cool. And I went back to his page one time and said, hey, we archived this episode. Da, da, da. You need to subscribe and click here and, da, and all this. I'm like, whatever, man. I go over to YouTube, search for that guy. After he posts, after he posts up his thing on YouTube, he just chops it down into one hour blocks and reposts it from Twitch to YouTube. And I'm like, oh. I'm never going on Twitch again for this guy. It's just not even an option. <laughs> just screw it. You know what I mean? It's the YouTube's just made it so easy and accessible and everybody's there. It's not a hassle. When I was on Twitch, I had to go through menus and then Yeah. Yeah. It was just a I'm like, oh, that's a problem. Because once I saw him, I noticed a lot of people were doing that. 
go live on Twitch, save the video, plop it on YouTube, screw Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, YouTube has the world market. I want to get some actual numbers here. So Nielsen in his January report said that YouTube is once again the overall top streamer in the U.S. 8.6% of viewing on television screens. Mind you, just television. This doesn't count. Yeah. Netflix saw is around 7.9%. So of all television, roughly about 9%, almost 10% of the U.S. is watching YouTube on their television as opposed to Netflix, which has actual shows. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. movies. <laughs> So it's yeah. bl blowing my mind. Like, what is the top streaming service? So what's happening right now? So yeah, YouTube is killing it. And Mr. Benja, I never forget. You told me <laughs> one day you will order Prime. I laughed at you. I said, why would I pay for a free viewing service? Man, I, I bought Prime so fast. I, I have not looked oh, back, premium, man. Premium. Premium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, YouTube Premium. Excuse me. I said Prime. Sorry, YouTube Premium. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I bought Prime at Prime. Don't get me started on that. But YouTube Premium, you told me years ago, you said you will be purchasing. I said, No, I won't. And I have not lived back, man. You premium saves my life every time. I was like, man, I I hated those commercials. Oh, they hurt me so bad. I can't go back. <laughs> you, ever, you ever go to you're on like a computer where you're not logged on and you see an ad yeah. and it just it hurts, doesn't it? It's like, <laughs> how dare how did this get, how this get through? I thought I'm on premium. <laughs> oh, I'm in my skip other ad, YouTube login. Skip ad in five <laughs> seconds? How about no? Yeah. So, uh, I love it. But, uh, but, yeah, I still wonder about Disney, man. Disney's got this. Disney's been bothering me lately, man. And I after, they just keep on messing with me. And I don't even want to, I don't even want to watch X-Men 97 anymore. We talked about it last week with uh, Dr. Chris. I mean, I want to watch it, but then once I see that stupid Disney thing come up and now included with Hulu, I'm just like, are you really? I don't care. I don't like you like that. So I'll go in for X-Men 97. But the thing that got me talking about it this week was the Acolyte trailer. So I'd seen it before, but I watched it again and actually took in what they were trying to do. And I got in a little discussion with Andy. Andy was all mad about the people in, on the interwebs complaining. And I was like, what are you talking about, Andy? They don't like it because it's, they don't like the anti woke crowds getting stupid again. This is TLJ all over again. And I'm like, oh, okay, I see. I've, I've washed my soul of that pain and I'm just like, you know, whatever. But it's interesting. I, I, don't, I don't know if we ever talked about the Acolyte trailer. Did, did we get into that? No, we haven't yet, which I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing because usually when it used to drop the Star Wars trailer, we'd be all on there talking about it, yeah. super hype about it. So that, Goes just to say one thing. Look, television on with Star Wars television has been, to be honest with you, better than in some cases than the movie opportunities. They had some True. good seasons with The Mandalorian, but they some seasons were terrible. They had Andor, which is a high, high watermark. We had Ashoka. <laughs> and a lot of yeah. folks then I, I know you liked it, right? I think I, I was on mixed bag on it. I oh, said, okay. I, I said, know you liked I, it. I, I, I said it did a good job of going as rebel season five. Okay. I, I think that's was... how I was framing it. I, as as okay. far as just, wow, I really like this Ahsoka season. And it's really a solid introduction into the, nah. but as far as rebels go, eh, yeah, rebels carry on the storyline there. Rebels is good. You guys, you and Chris, Dr. Chris told me about it. it was good. But so this is another television show. So I have better hopes than a movie, be honest with you. And I like the concept. I like the concept. This is about, hey, you know, what happens when the Sith start rising up and it's set in the time that we've never seen before in Star Wars. And I like the actress that's playing one of the leads in it. From She played Rue in, what's Hunger it called? Games. Hunger Games. Yep. I forgot the name of the actress. She's, and I get uh, why uh, they say Amanda she's part. Amanda Solberg. Solberry. Thank you. So she's a uh, part of that. Yeah, she's very pro-black and she's part of that probably why the anti-woke crowd woke up because they saw her name attached to this. But anyway, make a long story short, I think I'm excited about it. I would love to see a different storytelling. And it's so sad though, is I'm watching these shows first. I say, is this something I can watch? It's like none of these shows anymore. Even X-Men, this last X-Men, I was like, I said, oh man, I can show my kids X-Men 97. I saw this last one. I said, oh no, they can't watch this cartoon. <laughs> so, <laughs> so even this Star Wars, I'm like, let me check it out first. 
yeah. and see if it's something they can watch. Because even Star Wars has gotten a little crazy. So, yeah, man, I don't know about this one from a kid standpoint. Yeah, this, and this, it's a weird thing. We were talking about Disney and getting more, getting more, embracing the mature side of things a little more. I don't even know if I want to call it mature, just letting down that family vibe and their guards like eh, we're not guarding it so much we're just letting in a lot more combine that with the introduction of hulu and i did try out the search test where i was on my hulu disney and i typed in pam yes pam and tommy showed up and i was just like i don't know if i like this it's just weird. on disney plus yeah when, See, I, when, I, when I ran the search that's why i had to put up i had to put up the, the adele password i was like, oh no i saw i saw echo <laughs> pop up on my disney plus i was like, uh-oh let me get the password out. <laughs> Dude, are you serious? Yeah, Disney. Yeah, man. Oh, and so and sad. now so and now I'm looking at this Acolyte poster. I sent you a I, mean, I was gonna say the same thing. I thought I was gonna have to say something about it, but you're the design guy, so I'll let you go in on it. Okay, so if you haven't seen this poster, it's basically like a hard granite background with the words in, engraved into it saying in an age of light darkness a darkness rises and it's got a the handle of a lightsaber but instead of a blade being like a light stream of energy a lightsaber blade what's coming out of this lightsaber the hilt is a streak of blood so it doesn't make sense like in terms of physicality it's like why would a lightsaber be streaking blood I mean, it just doesn't make sense it looks weird. It looks dark. And it's almost like Star Wars is trying to be edgy with this. I know, man. And it's blood on the it's blood on the hilt, too. You saw that? It's like yeah. literally someone has a bloody hand touch this thing. Yeah. Oh, it's like you took a, a cotton ball full of blood, stuffed it into the hilt of the lightsaber, wiped it down the middle of this granite wall, took the cotton ball out, and then took a picture of it. It's like, why did this happen? So Edgy. that's my design. But even worse, look at that. You can tell it's blood. It's like the splotches too at the end. It's not all oh, neat. Yeah. They put little splotches around it. So it's, man, it's not just blood. It's messy blood. We're gritty. <laughs> it's not clean I, blood. I actually <laughs> think this. I actually think this is a move by, not that someone said this all at once, but I think collectively they were like, yeah, they want it to be all dark and all those guys from the 70s and 80s and 90s they're so stupid and dark we'll give them darkness we'll make blood and it's like yeah yeah come on guys why are you trying so hard <laughs> yeah yeah so anyway yeah and does that work with star wars that's the question it has its dark moments um with obviously empire strikes back with luke basically getting his arm chopped off but uh his hand chopped off but I don't know. It's, it's, it's never been, um, what's the word, a gratuitous with this violence, right? Yeah. Yes, a lot of people got murked with lightsabers. We know that and cut in half and all that. But we ain't seeing blood. This is, yeah, this is definitely different. So you could have you could have done better with a a cave full of kyber crystals, all gleaming blue and green, and then one red one in the corner. Man, or what about you had darkness light and there's a shadow figure in the background of a hood over their head where all these, these Jedi sit in the light and you got this dark yeah. figure in the background. You could even, yeah, do a play on that classic Phantom Menace poster, a, a different kind no, of play. See? On it, where you yeah, like have two a, a, minutes, we got a better poster. <laughs> I'm going to go over to ch chat GPT version four and try this out. Make me a poster. <laughs> Get out of here with that. <laughs> Get out with this mess. Man, so I'm still excited about the uh, show. So we'll see what it does. But yeah. it sounds like, Mr. Benji, you're not you're on the fence, right? No, it's, as I told you, man, it's always like pizza. Star Wars is like pizza. It's always good to me. But I will complain if the crust is soggy or if you're trying something silly. Instead of pineapples and anchovies, how about cherries? It's, eh, I don't know if I want that. It's pizza. I'll try it. All right. You got more of that? Well, I don't know. Do you want to talk about numbers real quick? How oh, yeah, much yeah. is Disney making on Star Wars? And I don't know if you pulled this up, but according to the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC, it looks at companies' books and records. They said that the report mentions that Disney has made approximately $12 billion since purchasing Lucasfilm for $4 billion in 2012. 
So that's about a 2.9x return on investment, fueled in part thanks to the box office behemoths like Star Wars, The, the Force Awakens. 3x return on your investment, not bad, relative billions of dollars, trying to get a billion dollars out the door. But that's just, I don't know if that's just the film or is that also the other lucrative stuff that they sell, which is the toys and merchandise and all that. So I'd be curious to see that number is a little bit bigger than 12 billion. I mean, they may just be talking about the movies themselves. But yeah, I think that's decent. It could be a lot better, of course, but hey. But the challenge is they've only had three freaking movies since they bought it, Mr. Pitcher. So it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you bought this movie in freaking 20, 2012, man. That's been over 12 years and you had three yeah, movies. Yeah. You can yeah, weigh way more money. I don't know how many Grogu dolls were selling to make up for that difference. I doubt, yeah, right. Good point. But anyway, so that's just a travesty. And the head still has her job. This is crazy. This is what's crazy to me. The head of Lucasfilm still has her job. <laughs> and she's only made three movies in 12 years. You're going to need a call from Andy about that, that comment. <laughs> I'm here by <I'm> that. <laughs> oh man. But I I don't know if this this violent or just take cute things and make them violent kind of vibe is going to continue. But in the meantime, we have the sequel, maybe another entry in the Winnie the Pooh Pooniverse. I shouldn't say Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey universe entry coming out so i don't know if you remember winnie the pooh the rights the copyright went out and now anybody can use that property and develop new properties on top of that some clowns went out there and decided to make winnie the pooh blood and honey now that same team is coming up with a follow-up called the pooniverse and it's going to feature bambi pinocchio peter pan tigger piglet the mad hatter and sleeping beauty all in violent, scary glory. <laughs> this is the meme that will not stop giving, will it? We heard about this, what, two years ago? Because it, it, it got into, what's it called? It was uh, released into the public domain, it's Winnie the Pooh. And so now it's out here in these streets. And then somebody took advantage of it, created a trailer. Based on that trailer, probably got that movie made, the first one, Blood and Honey. I guess it did decent enough to say, hey, let's do a, a sequel. In the meantime, we had stories about fourth graders getting traumatized. <laughs> what if some accidentally showed this? So that helped it. So they just have meme stocks. This is a meme movie series. This is all it is. It's just there to promote outrage and anger. But no one's actually really watching these stuff. I wonder, that, that, once again, there, there could be a play there. Uh, if there's like a series of 2B movies that come out every couple months, just based on a meme. S Slender Man Ooh. came out, did its thing. Uh, Mr. Benja, stop dropping game, Mr. Benja. Just let's just turn the pot off, man. You just, that that is actually not a bad idea. Now, I'll put, hey, what's it? Uh, Sora. Of, when Sora dropped, of, text the video. There you go. <laughs> Instead of Blumhouse, just call it Bum House. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Anything that pops off, man, like the uh, the Shade Club Shade popped off. They could have had a movie about that. <laughs> it was been like, <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea, actually, Mr. Bencher. It, it might come to that. It might come to that. It's what that's I crazy. Do. I see. I see. Good, good pull, man. Good pull. I wonder what, why you still want to bring that. I think you just like saying Pooniverse. That's, I think that's just a favorite good word for you. It sounds kind of, <laughs> it, it sounds kind of naughty too. <laughs> naughty. What's next, man? Hey girl, I done been all through the Pooniverse. No, I, just, no. I don't know. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Benja, Mr. Benja, I got transit. I got transition for you, Mr. Benja, on that one. That was you know who was saying that uh -oh. at at Lava's parties. Oh no! Come on, man. Don't, okay, God dog it. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Dang it! We Dang can't it. do it. You don't want to do it. This is Go controversial, ahead, folks. Go ahead. This is controversial, folks. We're gonna get into some controversy. 
Diddy then did it, man. Diddy. What is going on, Mr. Benjamin? Look, I don't want to get into too many details. The other people have done it better than us. This is just controversy. There's a lot of things going on right now. Folks getting arrested. Sam Bankman free got 25 years for his actions with FTX. Diddy's house getting raided. Both his houses at the same damn time. Mr. Benja, I know this is controversial for you. Why is it controversial? What do, do we not want to talk about this person anymore? See, I've been trying to get out of the gossip game in general. And then this happens and people just start talking like, mm -hmm. I knew when he said this and that, take that. I knew what he meant on that album. And I'm like, dude, you wasted my 13 seconds of a TikTok video to, to tell me that take that meant something else. Got it. And it's just. It's all like clickbait, and then you've got the, first of all, it's overkill. Raiding both of his houses, getting the kids locked up. I don't know what they're doing, if not trying to hide something that he may have access to. So I think this may be along the lines of Jeffrey, Secret Island, the Clintons came over to visit. Now I have a weird painting in my house kind of thing. I think it may be along that line. But it does seem, it even, th there's a lot of just weirdness going on here. It's like it came out of, seemingly came out of nowhere. But the rumor is, <laughs> I yeah, I'm going to be dodgy with my words. Dabble the rumors, Cassie, the whole case that she brought to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And they released, I don't know if you read it at all. I, I read briefly through it, was pretty terrible. The, all the injustices that went against her in her time when she was with uh, Sean Combs. And so I think the fact that he sold that so quick after that was released, and then now there's this bigger investigation. It's almost like that thread on a sweater. Oh, what's that little thread? People pull it and they say, wait a minute, this is moving. There's more here than we thought. And so yeah. now there's other things. And then also, let's be honest, the, maybe the Cassie was the last little armor that he was protecting himself with and then when she penetrated that armor maybe everyone else felt comfortable more comfortable talking now so there may have been decades where people weren't talking at all right. and then when that happened they like, oh well, i got some stuff to say and now people come talking to them they're gonna start they're starting to talk more to your point though yeah i i agree it's disheartening but it's not look man i always believe this anything we heard before it was probably true well, <laughs> it's probably let's true. Let's be clear. I'm not, let's be clear. I'm not caping for dude. It's just, there's so much stuff going on that all of a sudden he puts out, he tried to take down uh, the vodka company basically. And he starts the rock. This is big in terms of, wait, you're not talking about Dwayne the rock. Are you talking about? No, you said Ciroc was P Diddy. Oh yeah. Okay. I thought you came back with the rock I'm not talking about him <laughs> in his vodka but no the rock and p diddy were on the island together oh no oh he said that <laughs> meme that son what mr that. Bidget. What, what, um, watch this is gonna go viral this is gonna go viral no for just no, saying that <laughs> it better not basically <laughs> this so he starts fighting back against the system with revolt tv with trying mm -hmm. to go independent and he's still playing this game where He's going to play in that ecosystem and not play by the ecosystem's rules. And he keeps on trying to, hey, take that. I can do this. I can do that. And it's okay. Now you're dealing with these large scale global alcohol companies that make a gang of money. And it's almost on a, dare I say, gangster level of mm -hmm. business. And then his lawsuit against them for racism goes through. Magically, right after that, all this other stuff starts happening. He sells off a roll really quickly. He removes his hand. It's, there's a lot of little bits of information going on, little bits of stuff going on, people distancing themselves from certain things, like a little too quickly. It's okay. What's been going on? What's been happening? How much is true? What's not? Do people just not want to be associated with the name or whatever? Even Kanye, they start bringing up his old tweets and posts where he was calling Diddy a fed. It's wait, what? And it's it's just messy. And Diddy's been out of the he's he's been away from the people for a bit. Like he hasn't really been in touch with the people like he should have been. But mm -hmm. now all this is happening, and I'm like, oh Lord, here we go. 
order or my only take on this is two things. Number one, I was at the earn your leisure when he did create that big check. He was trying to do something positive. And of course, those guys always said, we never got the check. So that's a whole other conversation, right, right. Brad. <laughs> yes. But I always think back to Robert Smith, the billionaire that gave all that money to Morehouse. And when you did dig deep into Robert Smith's past, there there's some other shenanigans that went on before he provided this big gift to Morehouse and became this big philanthropist. So I'm not saying he was a snitch or anything like that, but if you go do the research, you find out there was more to the story with Robert Smith. And likewise, I'm not saying it could be the same with P. Diddy. We don't know when he talked to who yeah. about when and what. And so that's where the, the confusion is. And it, it does seem when you get on that level, there are some compromises you're making, right? Oh, yeah. Have you ever watched the, the what's that movie? The Departed, right? The, okay. the big twist there is you remember, you never saw The Departed with Jack Nicholson and Leonardo DiCaprio? Great movie. Yeah. That's basically the movie that you've seen it, man. The one that with Martin Scorsese finally got his act, his, I think his movie, yeah, his directing movie. Let's pretend I hadn't seen it. Oscar. The big spoiler alert is the biggest guy there after the, the, the Whitey Bulger type character played by Jack Nicholson. Turns out he's been, he was a fed snitch for like 20 years. That's why he was wilding out on these streets, man. And killing folks with impunity because he was a snitch. <laughs> so it's, and he was just adamant against snitches in the movie, right? Oh, he's a snitch. Yes. Kill him. Do this. He was the one that was the biggest perpetrator of all that. And so I say all this say is just... You just we just don't know what was done at those higher levels, and then now that he's no longer useful, what does that mean? So it, yeah, yeah, I, I hear your point, and I also see the other side too. But I don't know if we'll ever find the truth, but it's probably somewhere in the middle, and we'll see what happens, man. It, but it's just funny yeah. to me. It's like the people who are up there, they're never really good people, <laughs> decent it's really, people. It's really disheartening how corrupt broken, twisted, and just vile some of that stuff is when you start playing around in a lot of these circles. It's there's a lot in a lot of corporate situations or a lot of business situations, people may have run across this where they have so many rules that you can't help but run afoul of run, one of the rules at some point. It's, hey, look, I was doing this and I, I, I accidentally crossed over here. And it's, that's an illegal right turn. You're not supposed to do that. It's, what are you talking about? I'm just driving. It's, they have so many rules can get caught by something and then all of a sudden it's okay i know everybody here at this level does this but guess what we caught you and we're taking you down because of this because of what well actually we just don't like you anymore epstein weinstein i saw all these videos come up with Corey feldman still complaining that they didn't go That's they didn't name oh yeah videos of him that came That's up a name i haven't heard in a long time That's crazy. Yeah, he's still complaining that Michael Jackson got attacked the way he did and other people didn't. He's, there were much easier targets that they just left alone because they fit the script and they work the narrative. So that's all I got. Mr. Benjamin, we are ending this spicy tonight. Oh, my Lord. Oh, guys, look, man, look, we just like to have fun. Yeah, we just like to have fun here, guys. So look, it's all in fun. <laughs> Nothing we say should be taken as, you know, anything that is real or you can take to the bank. We're just talking and discussing as we do. So, hey, guys, if you like this podcast, please subscribe and comment. Show versus business on X, YouTube and Instagram. Listen to us at Spotify, iTunes or wherever you listen to the podcast. But also visit us at our sh website, Show versus Business, when you get a chance. Mr. Benja, have a great week. Hey, man. Happy Easter and peace.